Today I'll be showing you guys how to achieve this kind of roof where we have a different shape on the corners, whether they're interior or exterior or the flat sides. And then you can swap these pieces out and create any kind of roof you need with your setup. So while the roof that we're going to be working on is a curved roof in this case, the principle will remain the same of how to achieve this effect, which is to get a separate shape on the corners of the exterior, on the interior, as well as on the flat sides. Now, there are, of course, going to be limitations in some aspects uh, with this, and you're going to modify it for things like this, where you have a full point. With what I'm going to be showing you and how to achieve this look, you can propagate that and continue on to make any kind of roof, you guys. So get to it. I've gone ahead and modified the shape of our building so that we have an inner corner of every type. So that way we can judge it if it's working correctly. And we have an exterior corner of every single angle, as well as some flat sides and some that are just immediately corner into corner. But this is our current roof and it is not up to standard. So let us go ahead and open up our PCG graph. So to get started, what we're going to do is actually do the exterior corner. So those are the corners on the outside kind of facing into the building. We're going to do those first. So to do that, what we're going to do is use the walls generations method that we used before to do this. And before we do, I want to give a big shout out to Nizon. They were the ones who showed me this method. Originally, I was going to do a more complicated method, but this one is much simpler. So I've gone ahead and used it and incorporated it. So once again, thank you, Nizon, from the Discord. So I'm going to go grab my exterior walls generation right here. I'm going to grab this and just for convenience, I'll grab this as well, although I'm going to be unhooking it and I'm just going to duplicate it down below. And then I'm going to take our spline sample, which is our interior spline sample, and I'm just going to plug this in like so. And so now we have this set up and we set this up in part one. And all this is is taking our wall points and putting it in each direction, as you see here, with the correct offset. So this generates the four walls from the original single point. And if this is your first video, this is the wall offsets values that we have. You're just taking our wall size that we've taken and then dividing it by two and then inverting it for the X and the Y's depending on which one it is. So first one's positive, negative, positive, negative for X and then Y. We'll go ahead and disconnect all of these. And before we actually do our difference, once we have rotated these points, if I go ahead and sample these, with the samples, you could see that the points are in the middle of each wall. We don't want it to be in the middle. We want to get the point in the corners. Now that these are all rotated and in the correct locations relative to each other, we need to offset them. And we need to offset them half of the X value. Instead of making a new variable here, what I'm going to do is get ourselves a transform points. I'm going to open this up with it open. I'm going to get wall offset one and I'm going to plug it in into wall offset min and offset max. Now looking back at our blueprint graph, if I come here, you can see our wall size divided by two is our wall offset one. So I know this is going to be positive half of the length. If I wanted negative, I would do offset two. If I want the Y value to be different, I can use wall set three and four. So these are just good values to use repeatedly. While they're I call them wall offsets, they're not necessarily just wall offsets. So we're going to be offsetting it by half of the wall in X. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it for each one because we want to offset each one of these. This is not an absolute transform. This is a relative transform. So based on the rotations that we have set up here, you can go ahead and move it over along the X. And now with the points offset, you could see it is actually going right into the corners, which is exactly what we want. From here, we need to set up the difference node. So I'll go ahead and plug in the source to be just straight through. I'm going to scoosh it over to the side because we're also going to need two merge nodes. So for the first merge node, we're going to take the points from the second and the third. We're going to take them and that is going to be our difference for the first section and the fourth section. And then for the second merge, we're going to take the points from the first section and the fourth section and is going to be our difference for the second and third. So now if I just take a sample of, let's say this one right here, you can see it has now filtered out the points that are just facing in this direction. No other points are in any other direction. If I sample one of the other points, you can see it is sampled all the points facing in this direction. So from here, we need to merge them one more time. So I'll go ahead and grab ourselves another merge node and we're going to need two of them once again. And I'm going to merge the first two like so, and we're going to merge the second two. 
And the reason we're merging them again is because we're once again going to need a difference node. So I'll grab myself two, these two difference nodes. I'm going to duplicate them over. And then like before, out goes into source, out goes into source. And they're basically just need to difference out each other. So one removes it from the other. And then once again, like previously, let's merge these points. So we have a nice, convenient single node setup. Now, if I sample this and merge node, you can see right here, we have the exterior points and there's just the exterior ones. What I'm gonna do is just scoosh this over and I'm gonna comment all of this to be the exterior roof corner so we know what it is. And now I need to spawn the mesh. So I'm gonna grab myself a static mesh spawner. And before I do this, I'm gonna need a transform node. So I'll drag out and get ourselves a transform points and plug this in. So for a static mesh spawner, I've gone ahead and created some roof geo. And you can see it right here. So we just have, we have an outer corner, just a flat side and an inner corner. And these are perfectly square. And of course you can modify yours to be any shape you want. This is just a very basic setup. Of course you can make it pretty for yourself. And I've also gone ahead and applied a two-sided material for it because I have not designed a reverse for it. You can of course close this up so it's flat on the bottom or create a thickness to it. If we decide to look at it from the bottom, I didn't want to see through the face. So I'll go ahead and add a static mesh entry in here, and we're going to plug in our exterior corner here. And as soon as I do, you can see that we have, well, the corner in place, but it is not rotated correctly and is also not raised up correctly. Now you can, of course, for your shape, automatically put in that offset by default into the mesh itself. I have not. And I have also not angled it properly, as you can see. So we can do that all in PCG. So for our transform points, I'm going to set the rotation minimum and maximum to be 90 degrees for the Z. That will get us the proper rotation. And then we need to offset the roof location. So if I right click and get roof offset, this is already a variable that we've created in the past that gets us our offset. And this is basically the 300 units or so that we need to move the roof up to the top because our all height is 300 units. Our roof offset that we created before just says it to be 300. So I'll go ahead and plug this into the minimum and the maximum offsets. And just like that, you can see it is now actually placed in the correct place and it is all rotated correctly. If I select this and I say number of floors is three, it is also going to move it up because the roof offset that we have created is relative to the amount of floors. So if I go up, See, it moves up with it. And for reference, this is the roof offset node in the blueprint where we take the amount of floors, we multiply it by our height, which is 300, and then we just pipe it into Z, X and Y are the same. So it moves it only up based on the amount of floors. If you guys are enjoying this tutorial, consider hitting the like button below and subscribing if you're new. But let's get back to it. With the exterior roof corners complete, let's do the interior ones. So I'm going to just reuse this section. We don't need to make a new one for this, but we are going to need a few more different stones. So I'll go ahead and grab these, duplicate them down, and just like before, plug in the first one into the source, second one to the source, for all four of these. The difference is what's different on this one. So we're going to take the second one, and that is going to be the difference for the first one. The first one is going to be the difference for the second one. The fourth one is the difference for the third one, and the third one is the difference for the fourth one. And then from here, this is pretty much the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to duplicate it over, and just plug these in like so. And once you have this, if I sample that last merge node, you can see we are getting that interior point, but we're also getting the exterior corner point. We don't want to have both of these. We only want to have one of them. So that's this very simple fix. Let's grab ourselves a difference node, and we want to actually just remove the points that we created from the exterior. So from this merge node, plug that into the differences. And now if we sample that, we can see we're just getting the interior, which is exactly what we want. So now we need the exact same thing we had above. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to duplicate it over, and I'm just going to plug this in. Instead of the external one, I'm going to select the internal one. With the internal one selected, you can see right here, we now have the correct orientation on all of them. Again, with the same 90 degree offset, but it is now actually showing up in every single angle. And you can see where we only have a corner into a corner, it now blends in quite nicely. And the only thing left to do now is to get the flat, which we now have the correct points for everything else. So as you might imagine, we could take the original points, subtract these points, and we'll get the rest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna reuse the walls that we created in the past, and I'm going to just use those because those are already filtered out for us. With our generated walls, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna grab myself a transfer points. And what we need to do is offset these points because as you recall, we offset them by this value. We need to do the same here. So in fact, I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna duplicate it here, and we're gonna hold control and just 
reattach it. So now we have the exterior walls offset correctly relative to our roof. And then from here, we need to, of course, remove the rest of this. So I'm gonna grab ourselves a difference node, plug it, the transform points into the source, and then we need to take both of these and merge them together. So I'll go ahead and grab ourselves a merge node, plug that into the difference, and we need to grab from this merge on the exterior and on the interior and plug those merges into this merge, like so. Now I'll just go ahead and squish this, let's say over here, and add a little bit of a reroute to clean this up just a tad. So there you go. So once this is plugged in like so, we can go ahead and, well, do the same thing as we did here. I'm gonna take this, duplicate it over, plug this in, and just swap out my standard mesh spawner for the flat one. And select the flat, and there you go. You could see it is now filled in this roof completely. So now the flat sides are all in right in between all the corner pieces. And if I change the amount of floors to let's say four, well, it comes with it. Go as high as we want and it will always come along with it. And as always, the project files for this are gonna be available on my Patreon. We can join these wonderful people and helping support what I do. It really does mean a lot. Thank you guys so much. And if you wanna join the awesome people like Nizon who develop stuff like this and see what other people are working on, come join the Discord. The links are in the description as always. Let's get back to it. So the last thing to do is to fill in this roof section. Now we definitely had this before. We had the roof offset and we positioned and scaled the floor effectively. And if I plug this in, you can see it is there, but it is now on the wrong level. So we need to actually raise it up. And the amount you need to raise it up will entirely depend on how your roof is structured. So this is gonna be a more custom value. So what we're gonna do is go into graph settings and out ourselves a roof flat offset and this is going to be a vector and effectively into this vector we need to specify how much we want to move it up so in my case i'm going to move it up 310 units 300 for the wall height plus a little bit extra because it has some thickness of course depending on your shape you might want to have it maybe indented you might want to have it a bit higher it all depends on the shapes and the angles that you're using. I'm gonna detach this section here for the static mesh spawner, and I'm gonna grab myself another transform points. And here we need to just plug in the new variable that we created. So I'm gonna get roof flat offset, and I'm gonna plug this into offset min and max, plug in our transform points from before into this, and our static mesh spawner. Now it has indeed raised up the platform, but as you can see, well, we have now an inset. We don't want to actually take as many points here as we have below. It is no longer lining up. So we need to modify this to accommodate this new shape. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm gonna do is actually detach this transform points and I'm instead go right into this one where we have the floor offset and the floor scale. We're gonna do this section down the line later. So that way we only do it once. And then we need to take this and then remove the actual sections that we had before, because these exterior roof points, we don't want to use them for the actual main roof. We want to kind of cut them out. So from here, let's grab ourselves a difference node. I'm going to take this entire section. I'm going to scooch it over the right here. And the reason is we want to grab this transform points. And this is from our flat sides. So in fact, we're going to call it that roof flat sides. We know what this is. And from the roof flat sides, we want to take this wall offset and plug that into our difference node. So that goes ahead and removes those exterior points that we don't want. Now we want to grab the roof offset that we unhooked from the beginning and plug this in after this difference node. And now if we plug this in directly through, you can see it now has the correct shape, but we need to offset it still because it needs to be offset by negative half of the length on the X and positive half of the length on the Y. As you recall, we have these values right here. We created these, but we don't have a combination that is both X and Y, but that's okay. We can still just reuse these values. So positive Y is well offset three, and negative X is wall offset two. So what I'm gonna do is take this, I'm gonna squish it over, and we grab ourselves another transform points right in between these, open it up so we can get access to our offsets. And I'm gonna get wall offset two and get wall offset three. And if you drag out of one of them, you can search for add. We wanna add these two together, and we will plug that into our offset min and offset max and then go ahead and collapse it. And just like that, you could see it is now in the correct location. Now, I don't want this material here. In my case, I just wanna replace everything with this basic two-sided material. So I'll go ahead and select the static mesh spawner and I'll replace this one with another version of it that just has the correct material applied. And now, as you can see, we now have the correct roof. And as you see here, it is a little bit inset. And if you don't want it to be inset quite as much, you can of course go into your graph and modify 
the roof flat offsets to be anything you want. For example, if I make it a little bit higher, you can see it goes up a little bit. If I move it down, it can go down. So play around with this. It'll entirely depend on how high you have your roof yourself, how deep you want to fit in, what it's designed for you. And now playing around with the different offsets and the differences, you can go ahead and customize this to kind of your heart's content to get the points that you want. And now that your building is more or less complete, check out this video right here where I can show you how to bake it down to a static mesh or a instance blueprint and remove the PCG aspect from it so you can move it anywhere in the world.